Well, it turned out to be a fantastic classic fall day out there today, turning a little bit chilly now as we move forward with temperatures dipping down well into the 50s. But we're expecting another very warm and beautiful fall day to kick off the weekend tomorrow. We'll let you know in just a bit. I pick up the Lord machine and I shake it and I do what people say, look on the check and I check it out. New tonight at DC News Now at 9, a shady swipe. Credit card skimmers are popping up at stores and gas stations all across our area. How you can stop thieves from getting your money. And new details on a push to slow you down your school. Some advocates say speed cameras are the way to go, but there's still pushback from some parents. Plus, a welcome way to kick off the weekend. Downtown Bethesda Streetery reopens, but it looks a little different than before. We're live for the changes on this Friday night. Good evening, and thank you so much for joining us for DC News Now at 9. I'm Thasmeen Mafus. Hi, everybody. I'm Chris Flanagan. We begin tonight breaking news in Arlington, Virginia. Police exchanged gunfire with an armed suspect. A live look right now at the scene. This is on Sherlington Road. Police say they were called out for a report of shots fired. When police got there, they made contact with an armed suspect. That suspect and officers fired their weapons. We're told that suspect was taken to the hospital. No officers were hurt. We're told police will provide an update. Of course, we'll make sure to bring you any breaking developments here on DC News Now. And tonight, Arlington, Virginia officials are looking into what caused a two-alarm fire at one of the county's oldest churches. So this is what Mount Olivet's United Methodist Church looked like hours after flame ripped through part of the building around 2.30 this morning. Now, thankfully, there were no injuries, but there was extensive smoke and water damage to some areas. The sanctuary and preschool wings were not impacted, but because of the investigation, Sunday school classes are canceled and worship with communion will be held outdoors this Sunday at 11 a.m. on the green. The church has sat on the North Glebe Road since 1854. It's Arlington's oldest church site in continuous use. And developing tonight in the district, a case of child abuse is being investigated. Police say a two-year-old boy was found unconscious outside on Atlantic Street Southwest last night. According to police, he was physically abused and is now in critical condition. We're working to learn whether a suspect has been identified. And Metro Police are still looking for three men linked to a deadly shooting in Northeast. 15-year-old Andre Robertson Jr. was gunned down at his great-grandmother's home on 48th Street yesterday. Police found the suspect's car a few hours later, several miles away, and burned. The teen's death comes a little more than a year after his father was beaten and killed about a mile away. His cousin Darius Robertson is charged with his murder. Criminals are targeting your wallet in D.C., and it can happen as quickly as a swipe of a card. According to MPD, nearly a dozen skimming devices have been found in stores across the district in the last four weeks. Our Mario Carbone live tonight in Wisconsin Avenue in Northwest D.C., where one of these skimmers was found. And Mario, criminals can place these devices quickly while nobody is looking. Yeah, they can and they do. In fact, MPD has several suspects on surveillance, photos and videos placing these devices when a store clerk turns their back. Now, once that device is on the card reader, it only takes one swipe of your card to lose your personal information and your money. After all of this, I felt very violated. When Shakia Hines got home from shopping at her local grocery store, she knew something was wrong. And then I checked my um, app and it stated that I had a cash withdrawal of $640. But she didn't make that withdrawal. It happened after she used her EBT card for the first time. Then I saw the video of the credit card skimming. So she called police. They said that they got at least five calls with the same thing. Heinz believes she was the victim of skimming, and according to officials, it's happening all across Northwest and Northeast D.C. The police department says it's confiscated at least 10 different credit card skimming devices in the last month. A skimmer is a device put on top of a legitimate card reader to steal your information. This credit card skimmer was on top of here with 3M tape. This video shared by Andrew S. shows one such device found at the 7-Eleven on the unit block of Peabody Street Northwest. That's credit 
a car from. MPD is now asking the public's help identifying these suspects caught on surveillance video placing the devices. Police say these two people attached a skimmer at a store on the 3400 block of Connecticut Avenue Northwest and these two on the 300 block of Hawaii Ave Northwest. You should look for loose mechanisms. It's something shoppers like David Hill are worried about. Sure, because I uh, use credit cards. Um, I'm a starving, struggling student. You're going to always have the flim flam man. There's a will, there's a way. Kathy Ortiz believes criminals won't stop, but she says you can take steps to protect yourself like she does. I pick up the little machine and I shake it and I do what people say, look under, check it, I check it out. I can't hear if you guys are hearing me. This fire truck is pretty loud behind us, but police are saying that uh, if you see one of these devices out uh, when you're out shopping, you'll want to report it to police. There are also ways to protect yourself, much like with what Ortiz said, where you can uh, check the card reader before you actually put your card in there. We'll list the tips from police for you guys on our website. That's DCNewsNow.com. Reporting live in Northwest D.C. tonight, I'm Arielle Carbone, D.C. News Now. Marielle, thank you. Perfect on cue there. And also tonight, bikeway construction in part of Montgomery County is finished. And tonight, the county reopened a reconfigured streetery. That's right. It allows people to still dine outdoors while making sure businesses recovering from the pandemic get as many customers as possible. Yeah, we're talking about Woodmont Avenue and Bethesda. And that's where we find our Montgomery County reporter, Cheyenne Corin live. And Cheyenne, this is a pretty popular area. Hi, Thespian. Yeah, that's right. This Woodmont Streetery is really popular, and it's actually one of my favorite places here in Montgomery County. But actually, during the pandemic, this street was actually closed off to traffic to allow for more outdoor seating. Now, that ended after Labor Day, but tonight it reopened, but it's going to look a little different than it did before. If it wasn't for the extended outdoor seating, the streetery, you know, a lot of places wouldn't have survived. Streeteries such as the one here on Woodmont Avenue were opened under the shared streets program during the pandemic and kept many businesses afloat when indoor dining was restricted. It kind of feels like a no brainer to me. I don't know why you wouldn't have an outdoor area where people could congregate. Obviously, we have kids um, running around playing with each other. We're meeting other parents. It's just it's a really great feature for like a community like Bethesda to have. To decide whether or not the streetery would remain closed to traffic, the county sent out a survey to residents and businesses. The survey showed most residents wanted to keep the streets closed to traffic, but about half of businesses in the area felt differently. I had to see the streetery go away because we had extra tables here, so it kind of cuts revenue. But due to the temperatures getting cooler, the outside business kind of slows down. The county says this solution is a middle ground. Two of the four lanes are back open, so it still provides expanded dining and new curbside pickup zones. But uh, I think if they can make it work with like the traffic, um, I think it does way more harm than good. You want to see people in public spaces. You want to feel like you can walk down a street and see someone you know. Um, I think the overall social benefit is huge. And in terms of safety, I mean, there's people on this side that are enjoying their food. And then right here, there's traffic going through. Right now, they have these orange traffic barriers. They say that this is just a short-term solution. And if you're wondering, also, the cycle bike lane that was in construction that really held up this reopening, now that construction is complete. And I was also a little curious. I mean, it's a Friday night. It's beautiful weather. It seems like there's not a lot of people out here. So I went over to the Bethesda Streetery. And over there, all four lanes are open as compared to the two lanes here and there's a lot of people out there so I don't know Chris and Thusmeet I'm hoping that this isn't going to do the opposite and hurt businesses out here on Woodmont Avenue instead. All right, let's hope not. And uh, speaking of the weather, Cheyenne just said it a beautiful night outdoors if you're eating or perhaps you're out by a fire pit. Not yeah, bad. I was jealous just to watch Cheyenne out there because it looks so stunning. We got meteorologist Damon Matson in for Janessa Webb tonight. And Damon, hopefully this nice weather will last so everyone else can check out Bethesda tomorrow night. Oh, agreed. You just can't go wrong with any activity. And I agree completely. The lights in the background, it just looks like the perfect fall night. And it pretty much is shaping up to be just that. We've dropped those temperatures down now as we have moved more into the overnight hours. 50s are pretty commonplace at this point. So jacket weather indeed, but comfortable still as we move forward here into the rest of the evening. And hey, if you are out there just getting some food or if you're a little more of a risk taker going out to what that haunted attraction tonight, this is what we have in terms of those weather conditions, 40s and 50s.
50s, mostly clear sky, and so Mother Nature is on your side if you're taking on those different jump scares at some of those attractions. Never catch me at one of those. That's all I can say about that. Or, hey, maybe you haven't picked out those pumpkins yet to carve up for Halloween. Tomorrow may be the prime day to do so. Look at these conditions on your Saturday. We're talking about temperatures warming up more likely into the 70s than the 60s. We're going to have plenty of sunshine, but a few clouds are going to move into the picture late. Nothing that should cause any major hiccups. And it will be a little bit breezy, but it's a southerly wind, so it'll help make it feel even warmer still. Now, the question is, are these warm, beautiful conditions going to last the entire weekend, or are we gearing up for some changes as we get into the early part of next week? We'll have your full forecast coming up for you here in just a bit. Thank you, Damon. And a push to make streets near schools in Alexandria safer is up for a vote tomorrow. And advocates say it's a crucial step towards ensuring fewer crashes and less severe injuries. Our Max Marcilla joins us live from George Washington Middle School in Alexandria. And Max, from city councilors to school board members to people you spoke with, there's unanimous support for this. There is. So exactly what the city council will likely be approving tomorrow is the installation of five speed cameras near school zones, something the legislature allowed them to do this past year. We don't know the exact locations of where those cameras will be set up, but we do know that studies say they are effective. Crossing streets near Alexandria schools could be a bit safer soon. That's the goal of a city project nearly at the finish line. Last year, Alexandria allocated nearly half a million dollars for speed cameras in school zones. And on Saturday, there's a public hearing to formally adopt the policy. Public safety advocate Jim Durham has been pushing for this change. Infrastructure changes that would encourage drivers to uh, drive at a, a slower speed. Uh, would be a, a significant factor. The proposal would cap speeding tickets at a $100 civil penalty if the driver is going at least 10 over the speed limit. The city says the intent is not to raise money, it's to keep kids safe. But Bill McCune, who lives across from George Washington Middle School, thinks the price tag could be a deterrent. You know, and I don't see any harm in going up or doubling it or even going higher when it's more than a first offense. It's not the only measure Alexandria is considering. The school board passed a measure to request the speed limit in some school zones be bumped down from 25 to 15 miles an hour. One parent we spoke with said she would have preferred speed bumps instead, though there is data showing the effectiveness of the cameras. Speed cameras are, again, an absolutely proven countermeasure. The Department of Transportation calls them effective and reliable in altering the social norms of speeding. It's important. I think safety is the number one issue. And that public hearing set to get underway 9.30 a.m. tomorrow. It is expected to pass this measure about the speeding cameras, especially since the money for it was already approved as part of this current year's fiscal year budget. Reporting live from Alexandria, Max Marcella, D.C. News Now. And DC News Now is your local election headquarters. Ballot drop boxes are now open across the district. Residents can drop off their mail-in ballot at any drop box at any time between now and 8 p.m. on Election Day. Election Day is Tuesday, November 8th. There are more than 50 drop boxes all across the eight wards. Now, ballot drop boxes are already open in Maryland. In total, there are 281 across the state. The deadline to request a mail-in ballot by mail is November 1st. Voters can also request an email with a link to a mail-in ballot by November 4th. Deadline to register to vote is Tuesday, October 18th. And coming up in our next half hour, Virginia's voter registration system is riddled with problems. At 930, we look into whether voters are being impacted and whether this will cause problems before Election Day. Also, when we return, Raleigh, North Carolina, reeling from yesterday's mass shooting. Police say it was carried out by a 15-year-old boy tonight. We remember the victims killed in the attack. Plus, well, the future of the DACA program to protect young immigrants looking more certain, at least for now. We're back with the federal judge's latest ruling.